Hello again and welcome to our latest video here on the YouTubes. My name is Jay Tate and this is the Auburn Athletics Channel, which is actually paired to AuburnSports.com. Today we're going to talk about the big news out of Auburn. Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator, has bounced. He is leaving Auburn for Florida State to reunite with his mentor, Mike Norvell, who recently was named to the Seminoles head coach after a good run at University of Memphis. And that's where Dillingham was with Norvell for a few years. Then he came to Auburn for exactly one calendar year, and now he's going to reunite with Norvell at Florida State. That creates an opening at Auburn, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the guys or guy who may be involved with that situation. Before we get to that, let's go through Kenny Dillingham's exit, such as it is. This did not take Gus Malzahn by surprise at all. Once Norvell, I mean, the understanding was, Dillingham was the coordinator at Memphis working for Norvell. As you guys know, Mike Norvell was Gus Malzahn's GA when he was at Tulsa as the offensive coordinator. Those guys are our friends. I think Norvell would describe Gus as a mentor. And so as Norvell was kind of coming up through Memphis's ranks and becoming the head coach, you know, his guy, his offensive coordinator, almost like Gus's grand protege, if you want to look at it that way, Kenny Dillingham needed to get out of Memphis a little bit and just be exposed to some different ideas. So he came to Auburn one year ago on December 9th, 2018, as you can see on the slide there, and he spent exactly one year on the Plains. He was kind of a consultant more than anything here. He didn't call plays. As we all know, Gus Malzahn took control of play calling duties this year and did a good job, in my opinion. Uh, the offense, I thought, improved as the year went on and it more closely matched the things that Auburn's offense or the personnel on offense could do. Uh, but we'll get into that another time. Uh, Dillingham was basically a consultant. He didn't call plays, and he would be on the horn, maybe suggesting things to Malzahn or, or different plays or different formations or things the defense was doing, that kind of a situation. He didn't call plays. And then during the week, he would work with Malzahn, and they'd come up with a play sheet and that kind of a thing. But really, he was a consultant. Uh, he was a very, he's very young. He's still in his 20s. And I think it was a good job for him just to see something different and to kind of chew on some different ideas. But the, the goal all along was that Norvell was going to move up and Dillingham was going to go back with him. And so when Norvell got that job at Florida State, and Gus knew about that before anybody probably, he knew right then and there that Dillingham was leaving, and he probably knew even before then. Uh, so Dillingham worked with Nix a lot, Bo Nix. Difficult season for him insofar as true freshman, had a lot of that offense, a lot of the responsibility for running that offense was on his shoulders the whole year. And I think Bo was a very mature kid. But, man, you still need someone to kind of feel like he's in your corner, put your arm around you when you have a bad game at Florida and say, look, man, we're going to pick this thing back up. We're going to learn from this, and we're going to take the things that we've messed up and, and get better at it. That's what Dillingham did. He was the guy that met with Bo during the week and just kind of encouraged him and said, hey, here's some areas where we need to strengthen you need to kind of keep an eye on this stuff. It's going to be great, man. You're going to be great. You're going to be good. It's all good. Let's just keep you going forward. That was a big part of what Kenny Dillingham did. I wouldn't necessarily say he was kind of developing. I mean, he was developing Bo. I think a lot of that falls on Malzahn as well. Uh, but Kenny was definitely there for him and energetic, man. That's the thing I always remember about Kenny Dillingham. You know, on offense, a lot of times they get a little studious, a little cerebral. Uh, whereas the defensive coaches, when you're talking about Woodson, T. Will, Kevin Steele, I mean, they're out there jumping around. Lots and lots of energy on the defensive side. A lot of times on offense, you know, you're thinking about Gus, Cody. I mean, JB's kind of animated, but the other guys are kind of like, hey, guys, let's, let's, let's get our work done. Dillingham, jumping up and down, arms flailing, screaming, yelling, not in a mean way, just trying to get guys pumped up. I've never seen an offensive coach – have that much energy when he's at practice and stuff like that. And that's something that really stuck out to me about Kenny Dillingham. I think the players loved it. I describe it here on the slide as added vigor to the offense. But, yeah, just a lot of energy and passion. And I think the kids really picked up on that, particularly uh, Joey Gatewood. I thought that he really, really picked up on that well and really enjoyed that about Kenny Dillingham. So one year at the helm, and now Dillingham is going to be at Florida State. Good for him. Everybody here is really stoked for him. Now it's time to consider what Auburn is going to do to fill this position. I've got a pretty dang good idea what they're going to be doing. Uh, but we'll take a look at three guys right now that uh, can do the job and I think will at least have cursory conversations with Gus if they haven't already. We'll start off with Brent Deerman. 
the offensive coordinator at Kansas right now. He's actually only been on the job for like six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. He was an analyst to begin the season. They fired their coordinator after a really miserable start on that side of the ball, promoted Deerman into that spot, and they actually improved a lot on offense, uh, had a tough finish to the season. But, man, there's a lot of things going on at Kansas that aren't great right now. The defense is troubled. I think personnel-wise, they're not quite there on the offensive line. So there's a lot of trouble. I mean, not I'm not talking like in trouble with the rules, but just it's going to be a slow climb to get Kansas up to where it's challenging uh, Oklahoma and the other teams in that league. Uh, but Dearman, I thought, made progress, and they thought to, so for sure. They gave him a guaranteed deal uh, with a $500,000 buyout, even though they're only paying him a quarter of a million dollars a year. And uh, the bottom line is things are looking up for Brent Dearman. I mean, you think about it. He was a analyst at Auburn. He goes to Arkansas Tech, becomes the head coach there, goes to Bethel. One year there, incredible turnaround. They were 5-5 five and five the year before he got there. He leaves there 11-2. and two. And then he goes to be a, uh analyst at Kansas and uh, with Les Miles. He's the coach at Kansas, obviously. And now he's the offensive coordinator at Kansas. Huge, so upwardly mobile, it's just incredible uh, what he's been able to do in the last five years. But the reason is he's a good coach. He's industrious. He knows what he's doing. And he's not scared of hard work. He's got a lot of energy. So he runs a system similar to Malzahn's, although I think they tend to pass more. Uh, he might tell you that's because of personnel or because of the teams they're against. But uh, definitely at Kansas, they were throwing more than you would normally see out of a Malzahn team. But anyway, he took his system based off of Malzahn stuff and then added some things that he thought would should be different or whatever, just put his own personal touch on it. But it looks a lot like Malzahn's and Auburn Connection. Obviously, uh, Dearman was here for two seasons as a analyst. Uh, he was a high school coach here in the state before that and a guy that Malzahn likes a lot. The question with him would be experience. Again, we mentioned Arkansas Tech, Bethel. These are not big programs at all. He was really good at both of them, and they put up a lot of points, and they won a lot of games. But uh, just now he's getting to a point where he's at a program where, you know, I mean, Kansas is not a big-time great program, but they're in a legitimate league. And uh, he's now getting his chance to kind of show if his ideas will work on the bigger stage. But – Again, not a ton of experience. And he may be the least gettable of the three guys we're going to talk about today. I mean, a half a billion dollar buyout to get out of Kansas for a guy that really doesn't have a lot of experience. They want him to stay. If you remember, Les Miles hired Chip Lindsey there to start with. And he left for Troy like right away. And then Les Canning was uh, the offensive coordinator there. And they had to they canned him in the middle of the season. So they're actually on their third coordinator that didn't want to keep going through that. So that's a lot of money to pay for a... Uh, an offensive coordinator that doesn't have a lot of experience. But, you know, Auburn could afford it, but it seems like a lot of money to pay. So that's a quick look at Brent Deerman, who is, the again, the offensive coordinator at Kansas, and a good dude for sure. The second guy we'll talk about today, Bobby Bentley, who is currently the tight ends coach at University of South Carolina, previously worked with the running backs there, has not been the coordinator there, but uh, he's been a valuable part of the staff. Um, a guy who was a high school coaching legend in the state of South Carolina, he was the head coach at Presbyterian College once upon a time, and uh, he's been close with Malzahn for a long time. They've just kind of been buddies in the business. Uh, he considers himself kind of a, uh, I don't know, kind of a quarterback whisperer is what I always thought of him as, but uh, he just kind of does what he, what he can do at South Carolina, and so far that's been tailbacks and tight ends. He has an Auburn connection. He served as an analyst here at 14-15. Uh, I would probably draw lines between analysts. Sometimes those guys are just kind of numbers crunchers. And other times, I feel like they're kind of like uh, the hand of the king, so to speak. Guys that can kind of get in Gus's ear a little bit more. And I always felt like Bobby was one of those guys. If he had an opinion about something, he would definitely go to the head coach. And I think the head coach would hear him out for sure. We just don't know at this point what his kind of offensive plan would be. I mean, we don't really know. He hasn't called plays since he was a high school coach in 2013. And, you know, at Auburn, he was an analyst. And at South Carolina, he's, you know, he's not calling plays there. So we don't really know what kind of stuff he would even run if he were to run an offense at this point but I guarantee you there's a job he would love to have uh, no doubt about it and I'm sure a lot of his ideas are rooted in what Gus runs because hey that's a big reason why he knows Gus they got together to talk offense and that's something they were doing uh, when he was coaching there in South Carolina and he is definitely the most gettable um, would love to have a coordinator job uh, really liked Auburn lived here his son Jake uh, went to Opelika and so um, he'd love to be here but, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to actually happen because of this, la this last guy we got to talk about, Chad Morris, former head coach at Arkansas and SMU. Uh, the first thing there, Malzahn's friend, 
uh, those two are like for for real legit friends, like BFF. Like they go on vacation together, um, Gus and and Chad Morris. And the story's great. I mean, you guys have probably heard it, but Chad was a good but not great Texas high school coach. Saw the things Malzahn was doing in Arkansas when he was at, in high school, and just basically went up there and begged him, <laughs> "Please teach me your ways." And Malzahn, as he is prone to do, was a little skeptical, but uh, Chad stuck with it, and eventually Malzahn met with them and talked to them, and they all kind of became good buddies. And Chad took a lot of those ideas, implemented them down at Stephenville, Texas, uh, and to great success won uh, state titles down there in a very competitive league in a very competitive state. Chad eventually became the head coach at SMU and then parlayed uh, one, one great season there into the Arkansas job, which did not work out great for him. He never won a conference game and was fired midway through his second year at Arkansas. But nonetheless, he's a guy who's been a head coach. And if you're looking for a coordinator, that's a good thing to have, I would say. I mean, he's been recruiting at Arkansas for two years. So a lot of the kids out there on the SEC circuit are going to know him. Of course, it's going to help with recruiting. His experience is really second to none when it comes to being a coordinator candidate. I mean, somebody with that much head coach experience? Duh. And before that, a lot of you guys know, but he was the offensive coordinator at Clemson and was there to kind of instigate that rise at Clemson. He was the guy that put all that stuff together. And they've been able to keep it going, but uh, don't forget. And Brent Venables has done an awesome job on the defensive side of the ball at Clemson as well, but Chad Morris was there for the ascension on the offensive side. And he runs a lot of the stuff that Malzahn runs, of course, because he came to Malzahn and said, teach me your ways. He will throw the ball a little bit more than Malzahn. (laughs) That's a recurring theme, isn't it? Uh, But in general, if you watch it, it operates a lot like Auburn stuff. The question here, the number one question I would have about Chad Morris is, what is his role going to be here? Now, he's been a play caller for probably the last 20 years. I don't think he would be a play caller here. I don't think it would behoove Malzahn a year after finally getting a hold of that play calling thing and doing a good job with it to then say, no, I'm going to turn around and give it to Chad. I trust him. I just think it's too much because you remember Gus was calling his own plays and then he wasn't calling his own plays and now he's back to calling his own plays. And if he switches again, it just looks so wishy-washy. I think he's got to stick with it. So that means that Chad's going to basically be a consultant. Is he willing to do that? The optics of that are not great. But he will be coordinator, and I guess, you know, at least on paper, it looks like a normal transition for a guy who struggled as a head coach. But um, I believe that he could have – I think he had a chance to get some smaller head coaching jobs, and then uh, he passed on a couple. And so maybe he's setting himself up for this, and he thinks this is a better way to go. I don't know. But I definitely think he's the clear number one candidate for this job. I just, uh, again, I have questions. But one thing I don't question about him is his expertise. And another thing I don't question about him is how good of a guy he is. Chad Morris, I'm telling you, is a salt-of-the-earth kind of guy. And I've talked to him several times uh, through the years. And he is just such a gracious human being. And I don't understand how he could be a great head coach and be that nice. You know what I mean? I mean, sometimes you got to dog cuss some of these kids. And he may do that, but. If he does, I bet it's really hard for him to do it because he's just such a nice person. And I do think he's really good at uh, coaching offense. I mean, seriously. Arkansas is kind of a weird situation. I don't really hold that against him. SMU, he's putting up numbers. And at Clemson, obviously, he's putting up numbers. I mean, the guy knows what he's doing. I just don't know. Do you want to go work for your best friend? Do you want to go be a lieutenant for your best friend who does the same thing you do? Or would Chad look at it as, hey, Gus is the guy who taught me, and he said this before. Gus is the guy who taught me this business. I don't mind being his lieutenant because the guy knows everything about what I do. Maybe he's fine with that. Nonetheless, the information that Brian Matthews, our ace team reporter here at AuburnSports.com, has found in the last few hours, he suspects that Chad is probably going to get this job and will be named in fairly short order. I think BMAT was thinking at some point, maybe in the next few days, Uh, I don't know about that. I don't see any rush. I don't feel like Malzahn has to get somebody hired right away. But uh, if it's Chad, he'll do whatever Chad wants to do. Because, again, they're good buddies. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. Just kind of a quick overview of Dillingham, what he did here, where he's going, and the guys who we think have a chance to be the replacement offensive coordinator. Of course, we do think it's going to be Chad Morris. Thank you very much for watching our video. If you like the content here on our channel, be sure and click that subscribe button doesn't cost you a penny. If you like the video, thumbs up. And if you have a comment or a question about this, leave it down uh, under the video.
I try to get through and work my way through and answer those questions if you have them. So appreciate you watching. Till I see you next time, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.